Tonight, I want to talk about microcontrollers. Now, I fought against working with microcontrollers for years. I thought it was going to rob me of the hobby of electronics. I thought it was going to steal away from the core creativity that you can do with, you know, discrete components and yeah, that's that's basically it. I thought it was going to be more software based and versus hardware based and uh, you know, I thought there'd be limitations to it and you know, as I started working with these things, they are incredible devices, but and they do take less components to work with. They do take less time to program, but getting to getting past that step of getting the program to function as you expect it to is the hardest part you know getting to learn the C derivative code uh, syntax functions loops it takes a little bit of time to get your head wrapped around that and you know I am not an expert with this definitely not I mean I don't even work with this kind of stuff for, for my you know what I do for work you know I generally work with Alan Bradley processes programming in Iris Logix 500 5000 you know panel builder factory talk view vision studio that kind of software which is all lateral logic based you know it, it still works on the basic principles you know when you boil it down i mean underneath the lateral logic code is this code you know it's structured text so it all boils down to structured text but it's a little bit more understandable to a person that's never seen a lot of logic to understand what's going on versus you know this structured text or or c based code it's you know you're not looking at words you're looking at logic you're looking at switches you're looking at you know different outputs timers you can see the stuff happening you can't really see the stuff happening very easily with the microcontroller you kind of have to like monitor serial outputs on certain um, you know, on certain values that you're trying to monitor, but it can be done. It's just a little bit trickier. And the learning curve is just, I think, a little bit greater. Um, you know, so it's a love hate relationship, especially for me, you know, coming from uh, a time where this stuff really didn't exist. Arduino back in 1993, no, n not going to happen. It, it just wasn't there. You know, like Raspberry Pi, no not even there you know I haven't even begun to scratch the surface on this thing yet so I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do with this yet but I have it all here to play with I have it all here to you know sit down and, 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 and learn a lot of this stuff but um, I have a few projects in mind I have a couple LCD screens I have an ultrasonic sensor I have a voice synthesizer shield I have an Ethernet shield so I'm just gathering all these parts together to a point where, okay, what can I do with this? What do I need it to do? What do I want it to do? So, um, and I am still learning. You know, I'm not an expert at this. I never claim to be. Um, it's just, this is one of those things that uh, I've never thought that I would get into microcontroller programming versus building a discrete circuit to do what I wanted to do. Now, the advantages of having a microcontroller control the circuits that you're looking to build is if you have to change something you don't have to sit there and pull all these wires out of a board and find a different IC that you want or a different transistor or different resistor values to change something just one little thing is not working correctly or you want to do something different you just change a couple lines of code and it's done you know that's the benefits of the microcontroller and it has a lot more flexibility with it versus you know the discrete hardware um, one good thing is you can mix both bags together you can actually have a whole project controlled by a microcontroller so it makes it really really nice say if you wanted to whole you know control whole array of you know uh, segment LEDs or was it the seven eight segment seven segment LEDs uh, you can have a whole bunch of shift registers controlled by Arduino. You know, it's just you don't have to build all the clocks and all the crazy shit that you used to need to do. It can all be done through the Arduino. So it's it's nice. It's um, it's a benefit. So you know, time will tell where this will end. But you know, uh, I don't think it will ever end. I just think it's just going to improve from here. It's just the amount of uh, information that's out there for this stuff is unbelievable you know it's it's just nice that you can go on the adreno website and actually look up all the 
all the uh, references to all, how this code all works. And like I said, if, if, if you can just understand the core function of how the code relates to what it's doing, you know, understand what an integer is, understand what, you know, a byte is or a bit or, you know, I mean, you can print out these Arduino cheat sheet sheets. Let me see if I have one here. Basically, um, you know, analog read reference, advanced I.O., time, booleans. Uh, this is probably a good sheet to have on your uh, on your wall while you're trying to start programming constants and let's see what else is in here. The constants, data types, strings, arrays, conversions. Yeah, absolutely. The map is awesome. I mean, you can map if you have like a potentiometer that's putting out zero to one thousand and twenty-three steps. You can map that to zero to one hundred. So when you're turning your pot, you know, you can have on your LCD go from 0 to 100 instead of the actual analog value, which is, you know, 0 to, uh, you know, 1023. Um, so that's nice. You can, you can map with it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you get timers, delays, full loops. It's just, it just makes things a lot easier. Um, and... Unfortunately, I don't have the time to sit down and play with this shit too much, and that's it's sad because I got a full time job, I work, and I don't have time. You know, I come home at work, and I come home at night, and I don't have the time to sit down with a bunch of discrete components and sit there and try and figure out and you know write down schematics and try and figure out what value I need to do this and what transistor I need to do that. When I can just sit down and throw a couple components on my breadboard, plop my microcontroller down, write a few lines of code, and probably save myself. 10 20 hours a time versus building it now does it replace like amplifiers no it would never do that it will only replace certain kind of logic stuff and digital analog conversions and stuff like that it's never going to replace a power factor uh, power components power amplification it's not it's not going to replace that at least not not now um so yeah, that's that's all I just a little rant I wanted to share with you guys and that's that's pretty much it for the night. So have a good night. We'll see you in the next video.